All of you want to learn Kubernetes, but you don't know where to start, what topics to study in what order, and what areas are important for interviews. In today's video, I'm going to go over the complete Kubernetes roadmap that I followed. This roadmap is so simple that anyone can follow it, even a kid. What are some of your favorite things to do? Our reading in Kubernetes. What are pods in Kubernetes? The smallest deployable unit in Kubernetes. Nice. What are different service types in Kubernetes? Load balancer, no port, and cluster IP. How can you encrypt traffic between the pods using MTLS protocol in Kubernetes? Service mesh. And how can people be as good as you in Kubernetes? Watch your videos and like and subscribe. And what are you going to learn next? Blockchain. Nice. High five. Kubernetes roadmap is divided into these main areas. Kubernetes fundamentals, observability, security, networking, managed Kubernetes service from cloud providers, DevOps, service mesh and API gateways, and day two operations. And you might be saying, how about Docker? You don't need to learn Docker separately. I will go over the Docker components or Docker areas that you need to know. I learned Docker as needed basis while learning Kubernetes. And how about different tools? If you look at CNCF landscape, there are so many tools that you will probably go crazy learning all of those. Not all tools are important. I will call out the important tools that you should learn, and some tools are useless for interviews. So let's start with Kubernetes fundamentals. Kubernetes fundamentals are divided into basic and advanced. These topics you have to know for interviews. You cannot say, I don't know. You cannot give wrong answers on this. So first thing you need to learn is what is container? What is container orchestrator? What is Docker file? And this is where a little bit of studying Docker comes into play. You have to know how to do multi-stage build in Docker and what are the different Docker container runtimes and are they compatible with Docker runtimes? Then you have to go into what is Kubernetes? What are pods? What is the deployment? What is replica set? What are services? What is a daemon set? How to, how to write and read a pod spec file, especially a deployment file with replicas? What is namespace? And some of the popular kubectl commands. I'll call out must know topics for interviews using this small Kubernetes logo. And I put the logo on the top here because you need to know all of this. After you learn this Kubernetes basic fundamentals, then you go into Kubernetes fundamentals advanced, where you have to know ingress, service versus ingress, Kubernetes scaling, and within the scaling, you have to learn metric server, horizontal pod autoscaler, cluster autoscaler, vertical pod autoscaler, over provisioner, custom metrics using KEDA, so KEDA is one of those tools, and then you have to learn availability, under availability, you have to know tens and toleration and liveness, readiness, and startup probes. Then you have to learn cost optimization. And under cost optimization, you should learn the tool KubeCost. Then you need to know stateful sets. And if you are using Elastic Kubernetes Service from AWS, you also need to know managed node group, Fargate, and Carpenter. And you don't need to know all of this for interviews. But the ones I put the green Kubernetes logo with, you need to learn those. After you are done with Kubernetes fundamentals, you have to study Kubernetes observability. Under observability, there are three big areas. First one is logs. You have to study control plane logs, how you can export control plane logs to a logging system, and the more importantly, container logs. So basically the logs from your application. Under container logs, you need to learn open source tool, Fluent Bit and Fluent D. You have to learn container insights if you are using AWS. And the next big area of observability is metrics. Under metrics, you need to learn control plane metrics and data plane metrics. Under data plane metrics, so basically metrics about the pods, your application, you need to learn Prometheus and Grafana. And if you are using AWS, you can learn container insights. And the third leg of observability is traces. This will vary from one cloud provider to another cloud provider. If you are using AWS, you need to learn X-Ray. 
Under Kubernetes observability, you absolutely need to learn container logs, especially Fluent Bit, Fluent D. Container insights are optional. And under metrics, you absolutely need to learn data plan metrics using Prometheus and Grafana. And the other things you can skip for interviews. Next is Kubernetes security. This is super important because this is one of the hardest areas of Kubernetes because there is a lot going on. So you need to understand what is role-based access control or RBAC. Then you need to understand Kubernetes service account, role and cluster role, role binding and cluster role binding, kubeconfig, config map, secrets, and how different applications and users can have different access. For example, application A may be able to go to S3 bucket or a database, application B may not. Similarly, if you have multiple users, administrators, DevOps person, and a regular developer, how can they have different accesses to this Kubernetes cluster? How to do authentication and authorization with API gateway and ingress, open policy agent or OPA, security best practices, and under security best practices, you need to learn infrastructure best practices, image best practices, pod, network, incident response best practices. You have to learn Kubebench, Sysdig, or Twistlock, one of these tools, or Inspector if you are using AWS. If you are using EKS for AWS, you have to learn IAM role for service account, or IRSA, pod security group, and AWS IAM authenticator. Within these topics, you absolutely need to learn these ones that I marked with the green Kubernetes logo. Do not skip role-based access control, service account, and IRSA if you are using AWS, because those are the very common questions in interview as well as your day-to-day real-world projects. So right around this point, you will probably feel a little overwhelmed with information, and that's okay. I felt the same way. So what I do is I go back to Kubernetes fundamentals, observability, and security, and revise some of these important items and do some hands-on. Also, this is a great place for you to sip your favorite drink, rejuvenate. In my case, I'm drinking a protein shake. Also, gently click that like and subscribe button. Each like and subscribe really helps this channel grow. 85% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Come on, help the brother out here. All right, now that you are feeling a little relaxed, you went through some of the items that we talked about, let's go further. Under Kubernetes networking, you need to know how IP addresses are allocated. What I mean by that is how each pod gets its own IP address. If you are running out of IP address, how can you add more IP addresses to the cluster? IPv4 versus IPv6, and I'm gonna cover the IPv6 part in a little bit detail. After you learned how IP addresses are allocated, you have to learn about CNI plugins, and if you are using EKS in AWS, you have to learn AWS VPC CNI. Then you need to study network policy, and under network policy, you need to learn about Calico network policy engine tool. IPv6 is getting popular right now. AWS EKS just released the support for IPv6. You need to know why do we want to use IPv6? How does it work with IPv4? So basically, let's say you have a database and you are reaching from Kubernetes cluster. The cluster is running on IPv6. And how can the IPv6 Kubernetes cluster work with the database which is running with IPv4? And then how is it different than adding secondary subnet in IPv4? than using IPv6, because both adds additional IP addresses, so you have to learn the difference. Then you have to study core DNS, ingress. So I already uh, mentioned ingress under Kubernetes fundamentals, but it is of a networking topic as well, so a little bit of overlapping. Then you have to know what is Kubernetes private cluster. When we talk about different kinds of clusters, there are actually three kinds of clusters. One is the public cluster, Next is public plus private cluster, and next is the private cluster. So if you are working in a high sensitivity organization, such as banks or government, chances are they will be using private cluster. So if you are going for interviews to those organizations, and if you know private cluster, they will be impressed. What are the absolute minimum that you need to study for Kubernetes networking? How IP addresses are allocated, network policy, IPv6, just the why part, and you need to know ingress. 
at this point you have a pretty good understanding of Kubernetes concepts. So now you need to move on to Kubernetes service from one of the cloud providers. So you just have to pick one, you don't need to do multiple. You can pick EKS if you are working on AWS, AKS for Azure or GKE for GCP. I'm a little biased, I work for AWS, so I hope you pick EKS. Then under that managed Kubernetes service from cloud provider, you need to know the advantages of managed Kubernetes service, such as managed control plane, and then you need to know the integration with other cloud services with the same cloud provider. And you need to know how does it integrate, especially with storage, uh, workflow engines such as step functions and security concepts. For EKS, if you're using AWS, you need to learn managed node group, spot, VPC CNI, managed add-ons, IPv6 support, prefix support, AWS controller, container insights, managed Prometheus and Grafana, how to secure your AMI for the worker nodes, free ECR scanning, EKS CTL, and some of the other things, but these are the important ones. And for the integration part, you need to know how EBS and EFS integrates with EKS. FSx part is uh, kind of optional. You need to know how EKS can be called from step function for the security integration. You need to know how IAM, Inspector, and Security Hub integrates with EKS. And then you need to know gaps of managed Kubernetes service. A lot of the time, interviewer will ask you, okay, Mr. Candidate, you, you are saying you worked on EKS. Can you tell me one area where EKS had some gaps and you wish AWS fix those gaps? This tests whether you actually did something on EKS, did some hands-on. For those, look up the open roadmap. AWS especially has the EKS roadmap in GitHub. I'll give the link in the description. You can check some of the areas where AWS team is researching or work on progress, and you can mention one of those. And under the managed Kubernetes service from cloud providers, you absolutely need to pick one, and you need to know the advantages of managed Kubernetes service, especially the managed control plan. Interviewer might ask you, what do you mean by managed control plan? Can it scale? Do you have to manage etcd, etc.? Next, Kubernetes DevOps. You need to know the DevOps flow to deploy into Kubernetes. By DevOps flow, I mean the high-level flow. If the interview asks you, hey, can you describe the CI and the CD part of deploying an application into Kubernetes? So you need to know the high-level design. Next, you have to learn at least one of these container repository from, you can choose Docker Hub, ECR, if AWS, or JFrog, if your organization is using JFrog. Next, you need to learn GitOps, and within GitOps, you need to learn at least Argo CD or Flux, you can pick one of those. Then you need to do the hands-on part. You have to learn how to implement an application into a cluster using at least one of the DevOps tool. You can use Jenkins or Jenkins plus GitOps or GitLab if you want. But I just put Jenkins here because Jenkins is still the king of all DevOps tools. Then you need to learn blue, green, or canary deployment using service mesh. Then you need to know operator and controllers. You only need to know the theory for interviews rarely. And not many interviewers will ask you about controller and operator. And then you need to learn cluster API or CAPI. And within all these topics, you absolutely need to know these ones for your interview. All right, moving into a little complicated part, service mesh and API gateways. You need to know service mesh architecture, service mesh benefits, especially the encryption part, and then how to throttle, circuit break, retry using service mesh. How does service mesh authorization works with third party, such as Okta, Active Directory, etc. How do you scale using service mesh metrics? So KEDA comes into play here as well. How to do blue green canary deployment using service mesh. Again, some of the items are overlapping because they fall into multiple categories. You have to learn at least one of the service mesh product such as Istio or app mesh if you are using AWS. Next, you need to learn API gateway. So by API gateway, I mean, how can you create an API and the backend of the API will be Kubernetes cluster pods. There are two ways to go about here. One is, uh, the API Gateway, which is a separate service, for example, if you are using AWS, Amazon API Gateway, how it interacts with EKS cluster. Alternatively, you can also learn API Gateway running on Kubernetes. For example, Glue, Kong, MuleSoft, 
that you can run as an open source tool inside the Kubernetes cluster and create your APIs there. So for interviews, you need to know service mesh architecture and the service mesh benefits, and you should be fine. Now let's move on to Kubernetes day two operations. So this is more relevant for Kubernetes administration. You need to know how do you patch Kubernetes? How do you harden a Kubernetes AMI for worker node? How do you upgrade Kubernetes without downtime? How do you deploy an application into Kubernetes without downtime? How do you backup Kubernetes cluster? And common day two challenges, such as running out of IP addresses, private cluster errors, availability zone goes down, etc. and how do you solve those? Within these topics, you need to know the upgrading Kubernetes without downtime, deploying application, as well as some of the common day two challenges. I, I gave this uh, not a green color to show that you cannot learn all the common day two challenges, but if you have something on your head to answer in the interview, that would be good. So the big question is, these are a lot of things. And remember, uh, this is a full Kubernetes roadmap. If you follow this roadmap, by the end of it, you will be a Kubernetes expert. But for your interviews or day-to-day -day work, do you need to know all of this? No. For example, I myself don't know service mesh in super deep level, and I'm doing fine. Uh, so again, you don't need to stress about knowing everything. Just follow the topics that I marked as mandatory, and you will be fine. So next question generally what I get is how long would this take? If you already have a full-time job and you only have like an hour every day, it will take you from four to five months to do this. But if you are a student and you're learning Kubernetes, then you can get it done within two to three months. On that note, I do have a best-selling and highest rated Kubernetes course on Udemy. You can check it out if you're interested, but that's okay if you have some other course or you want to learn from YouTube videos, open source documentation, that's totally fine as well. Uh, all my courses comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you start the course and you don't like how I am teaching or you don't like the course in general, you get your money back, no questions asked. I'll give the link in the description. Please click that like button, subscribe and put a comment. Each like, subscribe and comment put this video in front of new viewers. Only 15% of the viewers are subscribed to this channel. So please subscribe and help me out. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next lecture. Bye.